Oh yes, it is time once again to get spooky. Welcome everyone back to the dark forest in the month of October. It is autumn, fall, and it's starting to get dark outside. Stay close to that fire, toast up those buns, and let's get spooky. The woods that surround my apartment complex are nothing special during the day. It's not a place where people hike or hang out. If the poison ivy wasn't enough of a deterrent, the trash strewn around the trees makes the place very uninviting. It's only after nightfall that things start to get interesting. That's when I start seeing the eyes. The animals that walk amongst the trees after dusk like to pass by and stare at me with their glowing eyes visible in the dark. The raccoons linger for a while, almost never blinking at all. The cats gently open and close their eyes a few times before darting away deeper into the trees. The deer glare for only a moment before galloping away anxiously. I love watching these creatures from my porch. I loved it, until last night anyways. Now I'm not so sure I should spend so much time staring into the woods after dark anymore. I was sitting on my porch with the hard seltzer and my phone playing music at a low volume, taking in the night air and watching the creatures in the woods as usual. After only about 10 minutes of the normal variety of nightcrawlers lingering towards the edge of the woods, my gaze fell upon a pair of glowing eyes a little deeper into the woods. They were large, even at the distance I was looking at them from. They didn't blink even once the entire time I stared at them. I froze when I realized the eyes were well over 6 feet off the ground and surrounded by a long, dark silhouette figure. It stood perfectly still. The eyes were definitely staring directly into my eyes. What kind of creature was standing there? Uh, uh, hello? I called out cautiously. All at once, a large, wide, toothy grin began to form right below the eyes slowly opening wider and wider until I could see two impossibly long rows of bright white teeth. I screeched, got up from my chair abruptly, and backed up against the sliding patio door. Then, the thing started to inch its way closer and closer to the edge of the trees. It didn't walk as much, while well, I drifted through the air. I yanked the patio door open, threw myself inside, shut and locked the door, and continued watching the thing moving towards the building, its eyes unblinkably the entire time. As much as I should have, I couldn't stop watching it. There's something about fear that, when strong enough, forces you to watch rather than hide. Maybe it's to keep tabs on whatever is stalking you to make sure you're still safe from it. Before the thing reached the end of the woods, it vanished in a span of a couple of seconds. I stayed inside my apartment for the rest of the night. I guess the only way to avoid seeing whatever thing those eyes belong to again is to avoid staring into the woods after dark. There's no way I could withstand another sighting. I'm staying with a friend for a little while. This was at her house. My friend was asleep next to me, and I was awake and crying a little bit. Enough for my throat to burn out, but not enough to wake up my friend. It was around 1.30am when the door to our room creaked open. 
I looked over and called out the name of her mom, thinking that she was coming up to check in on us in the night. Instead, I see the figure of a man crawl into the room on its hands and feet. It was like a really low bear crawl, keeping very close to the ground. Then, the figure stands up. It was a very tall man who was entirely black with no face. We made eye contact for a solid second or two before it vanished before my eyes. I am a very spiritual person, but I have never experienced anything like this. I got a very bad vibe from the spirit and turned on the light in the hallway once I got my bearings again. I managed to fall asleep, and when I woke up the first thing I did was cleanse the house and put up protection wards, banishing the spirit. I think the spirit wanted to feed off of my negative energy. I've been having a tough time lately, being the myths of a very turbulent part of my life. I had been crying just before the spirit entered the room, and I cannot express how many bad vibes I got from this whole experience. I have some questions, like why the hell did it crawl in the room? How did it manage to open the closed door? Where did it come from? I also wonder what the spirit's real intentions were, and if it was coming for me or for my friend who was asleep beside me. I'm not sure it expected to be seen by me, seeing how quickly it vanished when we made eye contact. Why did it crawl? Why? All of these things you could do as a creepy spirit. This isn't the first ghost I've seen, but it's definitely been one of the closest and scariest encounters I've had. The first person I ever drove was my mother, a few days after her funeral. She came to me while I slept. I was blurry-eyed and still half asleep when I agreed, fetching my keys and wandering to the car. It was only once I was in the car that I realized what was happening. She didn't speak much, just said that she needed to get to the airport. That's how they all are. I found only half aware. They asked to go to the airport or the ferry, or sometimes the train station. They show up in the dead of night or in the early morning dawn standing alongside my bed. Once I get them to where they want to go, they just sort of disappear. I guess it's their way of moving on. Most are peaceful, calm. They had died of old age or some kind of sickness. Sometimes, though very rarely, they died from some tragic accident. They would appear in the manner they died, broken, torn apart. That became my life. Until I met Harriet. She was my light, and together we had a child named Thomas. I still continued to drive, not often, just a few times per week. Harriet knew, of course, and she told me she understood, though sometimes I felt as if she was simply humoring me. And then Thomas died. We knew it was coming. Leukemia. He was diagnosed too late, not long after his seventh birthday. He lived for two more months. I took to drinking, hard, but it completely broke Harriet. She would sit up late into the night, staring at the darkness at the end of our bed. I'd drink downstairs until I passed out, but one night she found me there. She woke me up, clawing at my shirt, her eyes bright, frantic. Sam, you'll see him. 
when he comes to you. You'll see him. Let me speak with him, Sam, please. I told her that I never seen a child, only people our own age or older. She wouldn't believe me. She started screaming. She got violent. I had to leave. I had to. I couldn't take it, but I wasn't in any condition to drive. I woke up in the hospital, barely lucid. Machines hooked up to my flesh, wires threaded through my veins, but Harriet was there. I saw her through the haze as doctors surrounded me as they fought to keep me alive. The police were there too, asking questions that I couldn't answer. Through it all, Harriet stood beside me. It was days later that I finally woke, in the dead of night, still in the hospital. I turned to my side. Harriet was there. I reached out to her. I asked her what happened. For a long moment, she was quiet. Finally, she reached out to me. It was then that I noticed that the skin of her wrist had parted. Her arm bloodied. Her hand slipped through mine. Sam. She spoke softly. I need a ride. In fall of 2016, my best friend and I were roommates going through our freshman year of college. By the end of the year, we had come to the conclusion that our dorm room was haunted. It started out with decor falling off the walls. Some items would stay, while others would not. We tried different methods of getting stuff to stick, but it was always a guarantee that something would fall, and it would usually be at the odd hours of the night when it came noisily crashing down, waking us up in a panic, of course. One night, we were hanging stubborn string lights above my bed when I remarked that my best friend's own string lights stayed while mine did not. At this precise moment, and I do mean as soon as the words left my mouth, the lights fell down. They had already been hanging for about an hour or two. Our beds faced the entryway to the room and we both always felt like someone was standing there. Being alone in the room became a horrid thing for us both because we never felt truly alone. We even both reported to each other that we'd seen a black figure standing in the entryway just observing us or shapeless figures moving quickly out of the corners of our eyes. Things would be easily misplaced from our desks and nightstands, sometimes seemingly knocked off the surfaces despite never have been touched or moved to the new locations. It was always small things, like pill bottles, scrunchies, keys, cutlery, etc., we also were convinced that we had noisy upstairs neighbors. We heard constant thumping and knocking as well as footsteps. Repeatedly, we went upstairs to complain to the guys who lived above us. They were adamant that they made zero noise, going as far to leave us an apology note explaining that our complaints were fruitless and there was no way it was them causing this nightly noise. One evening, when the knocking and footsteps were particularly bad, we went downstairs to the cafeteria, only to see the two guys down there as well, eating a late dinner. This was definitely odd. We spoke to the RAs who told us that it was definitely those guys. We were room 415, they were 515 above us. That was the general layout of the building. In the end, we felt bad accusing them for so long. 
when they seemed so nice, and they were even willing to show us their class schedules to prove that the timing of when we were reporting these strange noises did not align to when they were even home. The scariest part of this whole experience was my eventual dream that I had. In it, I was in the body of something, someone else. I was standing at the doorway of our room before I sunk into a low, army crawl type crouch, crawling across the room like an animal. I went to my best friend's bedside and stood over her with an intense urge to hurt her. She sat up in the dream and screamed loudly. It was realistic enough to wake me up in a cold sweat, and I remember lurching upright and staring hard at my friend, who was asleep, just to make sure she hadn't been screaming in terror. I didn't sleep for two or three nights after that because I was so upset by this nightmare and I was afraid it might manifest me again. I'm still traumatized by this dream and vividly remember the details and I've always feared having it again, even years later. It wasn't until we moved out that we drew some conclusions about this experience. Directly next door to our dormitory, literally next door, we were neighbors and could see the place from our window, was the Chai Omega house where Ted Bundy committed heinous murders and attacks on several women. I'm not saying that Ted Bundy was haunting us, because that's a total and ridiculous stretch, but my best friend and I do have a theory that this area was and most likely still is vulnerable to being a sort of portal for bad energy or bad spirits. For future context, my best friend has had paranormal experiences her whole life and visited numerous psychic mediums who have told her that she is very sensitive to these kinds of things. I myself have had experiences, though not as intensely as hers. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the four October night horror stories. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends, and again, like always, spread me like butter.